Today's show is sponsored by the Electric Vehicle Association. Join up to support the electrification of transport and get the help you need to finance your own EV or clean energy future. And by Energy Sage. Visit the link in the description below to find local verified solar experts, community projects, and heat pump specialists in your area. And by Atmos Financial. Bank better with a financial technology company that's powered by a portfolio of clean energy investments. Welcome back to another episode of TEN, Transport Evolved News. This week has been another tough week for many watching, so here's hoping some of the EV and clean energy news I've got for you will end the week on a more positive note. So let's get on with it, and of course, thanks for joining me. As with last week's show, we're starting with more quarterly and year-end rundowns smushed together in a rapid-fire roundup. BMW was celebrating a great first quarter with global sales of 82,700 EVs split across its various brands, up 28% year-on-year. The majority of those vehicles were BMW badged, with 78,691 i-badged cars selling, up 40.6% year-on-year. BMW also celebrated making its one millionth EV last quarter. Here's to the next million. Volvo celebrated an all-time global sales record for the first quarter, with EV sales up 43% year-on-year in March alone. This led to a quarterly increase of 27% year-on-year, with 38,171 EVs selling, overtaking plug-in hybrid sales for the brand. However, it is worth noting that while Volvo set an EV sales record for the brand, EV sales in the US and China fell in Q1. Nissan published its US sales figures for Q1 this week, with sales remaining barely unchanged from this time last year, or indeed from the final quarter of last year. In Q1, Nissan reported 5,284 EV sales in the US, up 1% from this time last year. However, Nissan's EV sales as a percentage of overall Nissan brand sales dropped, down from 2.4% to 2.2%. Toyota is celebrating an impressive growth in battery electric and plug-in hybrid sales during the first quarter, with a lion's share of that increase coming from plug-in hybrids. Across the Toyota and Lexus brands, 3,500 EVs were sold, up 86% year-over-year, while plug-in hybrids were up 94% to 14,332. Fuel cell vehicles fell by 74%. Lucid was also setting its own brand records during the first quarter, recording 1,967 deliveries during that time, up 37.4% year-on-year. However, it wasn't all good news, with Lucid's production falling to 1,728 vehicles, down 25% from the 2,314 it made in the first quarter of last year. Lotus shared its Q4 and full 2023 financial results this week, showing a steady growth as it becomes an all-electric make. Recording revenues of $679 million for the fourth quarter, its gross margin sat at 15%. However, due to the usual high costs of transitioning to electric, it made a net loss of $750 million during FY 2023. Finally, for financials, Mercedes-Benz recorded global first quarter EV sales that were noticeably lower than that for the previous year, recording 47,500 electric models delivered during the first quarter. That's a 15.63% drop year on year. However, given that Mercedes-Benz has been heavily promoting the newer, more capable EQ models it's launching this year, it's no surprise that sales fell in the first quarter. Ford officially announced the details of its 2024 Mustang Mark E family this week, confirming pricing and some significant performance tweaks to boot. For the new model year, there's an all-new rear-wheel drive motor that's lighter than the one found in previous model years and improves overall torque. The new model year also uses a new LFP battery, which adds an additional 20 miles of range for most variants and improves fast charging speed by a claimed 20%. And for those that are bound to ask, for now, the Mustang Mark E keeps its CCS inlet, but is fully compatible with Ford's NAX adapter. The fastest Mustang Mark E is now the Mark E GT Performance upgrade with a 3.3 second sprint time and 11.8 second quarter mile time. One day before a wrongful death civil case against it was due to start in California, surrounding the 2018 fatal crash of a Tesla Model X, Tesla has settled out of court with a family. 
The high-profile civil court case sought to convict Tesla of negligence and wrongful death after Apple engineer Walter Huang's Model X turned and crashed into an already deployed crash attenuation barrier on US 101 in the San Francisco Bay Area. An NTSB investigation showed it was operating in autopilot auto steer with the radar-assisted cruise control active and apportioned blame between the driver and Tesla, as well as the state of California, for not repairing a previously used crash attenuation barrier. Tesla filed to keep the details of the settlement private. Mercedes-Benz has revealed its refreshed EQS sedan, which, as I just noted earlier in this video, is a possible reason why Mercedes-Benz EV sales were lower than expected in Q1. While the EQS has always been something of a luxury car with a heavy emphasis on the passenger experience, the new EQS leans into that more with a new optional rear seat comfort package plus replacing the three-row seat of the previous model years with two executive seats. There's also an increase in battery capacity to 118 kilowatt hours, which increases range by around 11%. Mercedes-Benz also notes an increase in towing capacity means that one can now tow your horse trailer with the Uber Lux sedan, and of course, it also features the promised faux grill upgrade and a return of the stand up y badge. Alfa Romeo has debuted its first ever electric vehicle, a compact SUV called the Alfa Romeo Milano Elettrica. Why the Elettrica at the end? Well, that's because Alfa Romeo is also offering a mild hybrid variant of the same vehicle called the Milano Ibrida. Slotting into the already crowded electric SUV segment, the Elettrica will offer a 54 kilowatt hour or 50.8 kilowatt hour usable battery pack, which will be mated to a 115 kilowatt front wheel drive train. There will also be a sportier Electrica Veloce variant that will increase the power to 174 kilowatts and offer a 7 second-ish sprint time. Pricing to follow shortly. New reporting from Business Insider, which cites data leaked to it by insiders at Fisker, claims that more than 40,000 people have opted to cancel their Fisker Ocean orders. If this is true, and we should note Fisker has not publicly refuted that reporting, it's terrible news for the embattled automaker, not least because those cancellations are said to be taking place at a rate of between 70 to 80 per day. If they are accurate, it also represents more than $9 million of lost revenue. It certainly is starting to feel as if Fisker's future is now a foregone conclusion, but I've been in this industry long enough to know that sometimes a company can pull itself from the brink at the last minute, as it actually happened to Tesla many years ago. So it's not over until it's over. The same week as Tesla settled out of court over a wrongful death civil case against its autonomous vehicle technology, it has brought back its FSD transfer program for returning customers. Despite CEO Elon Musk claiming in Q3 last year that Tesla would only offer customers just one chance to transfer pre-purchased FSD capabilities from one car to another, it's back, suggesting Tesla really does want existing customers to trade up to a new car. And while we are talking about autonomous driving, Musk announced late last week that Tesla would unveil its first robo-taxi on August the 8th, using a combination of writing which appears unusual for him and which has caused some corners of the internet to take note. We'd like to hope it was done unintentionally. Our short shorts are coming in a second, but first a word from a long-time sponsor of this channel, Energy Sage. Energy Sage helps homeowners connect with local verified solar installers across the US and now heat pump specialists in select markets who really know their stuff and can help you navigate the process of installing solar panels, help you join a community solar program, or indeed get a heat pump installed. I used Energy Sage when we were looking for installers willing to help us put solar panels on the roof of our home, and our Energy Sage verified installers were professional, knowledgeable, and even put us in touch with an amazing credit union that allowed us to finance our solar panels for as low a monthly payment as possible. Follow the links below to sign up for either of Energy Sage's free, no obligation services and get that ball rolling today. If you choose to use an Energy Sage installer for your project, we will get a small referral fee, so you'll be helping us out too. And as someone whose utility put up rates at the beginning of the year by 18%, I'm very glad that I have solar, so won't you join me? 
And now it is time for short shorts. Aptera has published a video of its first completed production body for the Aptera solar electric car. The finished body is now on the way to the company's headquarters in Carlsbad, California from Italy, where it will become the company's first production intent vehicle. We are still a year, though, from first deliveries based on the company's revised scheduling. Kia has confirmed that it's bringing three new EV models to the Indian market, with the first of them expected to be the Karenz EV. We don't know the full details of Kia's EV plans for India, but it's keen to produce low-cost EVs for India to cross-shop against imported ones from China. Friends with benefits took on a whole new meaning this week when Ford confirmed that if you happen to share a house with someone who drives a Tesla, you can get a bonus $1,500 lease discount on the outgoing year Mustang Mark E. Up to a total of 10 grand in discounts is available. General Motors appears to have ended plans to start selling the cheapest Hummer EV variant, the entry-level EV2. GMC had originally planned to begin selling the Hummer EV2 variant this spring, but sources close to GM told GM Authority that plan has now been axed. In an attempt to continue drawing down on its stock inventory and boost its sales figures, Lucid is offering nearly $30,000 in incentives on certain Lucid Air models. While some aren't available for quite as large a discount, that's significant sales discounts. The refreshed Zika 001 electric car gets some pretty big upgrades over its predecessor, and this week Zika confirmed how impactful one of those is. A new LFP battery pack from Cattle that allows a 10 to 80% fast charge in under 12 minutes at power levels of up to 546.4 kilowatts. Porsche may have just released its refreshed Taycan EV, but apparently work is already underway on a true second-generation version of its flagship sports sedan. As reporting from car sales in Australia details, the next-gen model will be faster, quicker and charge more rapidly. Cherry is close to closing in on a deal on Nissan's former ENV200 production facility in Barcelona, Spain, and if successful in its bid, will turn the facility into a new factory for its Omoda E5 electric car. Omoda, which is owned by Cherry, is set to start sales of Chinese-made E5s in Europe later this year. Tesla is readying a new over-the-air software update to be pushed later this quarter that it says will dramatically improve the charging curve of Tesla Cybertrucks using its supercharger network. The update will improve charging performance by up to 20%. The European Union Commission has approved a funding pot of 276 million euros from the Slovak government to enable Volvo to build a new EV factory in Slovakia. The facility, once built, will begin series production of EVs in 2026. The London Electric Vehicle Company has announced it will be offering customers a new £1,500 sterling deposit contribution that will effectively offset a recent drop in total available incentives under the UK's plug-in taxi grant programme. Hallandale Beach, Florida, has become the first municipality in Florida to establish an all-electric bus fleet. It recently purchased nine all-electric buses to make its city the largest electric bus fleet anywhere in Florida, despite the state government's anti-EV stance. Toyota has announced new lease sales for its 2024 BZ4X, or as some of you like to call it, the busy forks. Fresh from being called one of the worst cars on sale today by Doug DeMuro, Toyota is offering $10,000 off a busy forks lease. While Tesla is still taking on Cybertruck owners who sell their trucks on for a profit, a Tesla Cybertruck Trimotor Founders Edition just sold at Sotheby's Motorsport Online Auctions this week for an eye-watering $262,500 US dollars. That's more than twice its original MSRP. While some automakers are starting to end production of diesel-engined vehicles, Toyota Australia is leaning into a diesel future, with one executive stating that Toyota is considering pairing diesel with hybrid technology and adding that diesel isn't dead yet. Connecticut and Maine have both delayed their plans to adopt the state of California's zero-emission vehicle mandate. The mandate would have enacted a 2035 ban on the sale of all new internal combustion engine cars, but legislators weren't ultimately happy about that. In a similar northeastern blow to EVs, New Jersey has just passed a bill that will come into effect on July 1st that will add an additional $1,000 EV tax to every new EV sold, paying four years of EV tax up front. Existing owners will now have to pay $250 more per year to register their EV.
Tesla has launched a new long-range rear-wheel drive variant of its Model Y in Europe. The second most affordable Model Y now offered in some markets. It's €4,000 more than the standard range rear-wheel drive Model Y variant already on sale. U.S. charging company EVgo has announced a massive expansion of its Auto Charge Plus program, with more than 50 different EV models now capable of the feature. It ties vehicle hardware IDs to your account to allow plug and charge-like capabilities, even if your EV doesn't offer plug and charge. BMW and Rimats have just announced a brand new long-term partnership covering EV technology. It will focus on development of high-voltage batteries for use in future EV models, and it could give BMW a massive leg up on some of the competition. Mercedes-Benz has finally confirmed it intends to reveal its G-Class EV later this month. The brand has been dropping teaser videos for longer than we care to remember, and the most recent one of a pre-production G-Wagon EV on an ice lake is well worth a watch. Rivian is now offering new customers a free stealth paint protection wrap worth up to $5,000 on all new R1T and R1S orders. It's a great way to keep customers coming in as Rivian shutters its normal Illinois production facility to carry out much needed production line upgrades. A new survey of Tesla owners by Bloomberg Intelligence shows that of owners it surveyed, 87% say they'll buy another Tesla when they're ready to trade their current car in. That kind of retention beats many other brands like Lexus and Toyota. Hyundai has confirmed that its high-performance version of the Ionic 5, the Ionic 5N, will be heading to Pikes Peak International Hill Climb this June. Prior to the race, it will send a modified Ionic 5N to be revealed ahead of the 24-hour race at Nürburgring on May 30th. Ford has cut the prices of its F-150 Lightning lineup for 2024 with up to $5,500 off compared to 2023 model year trucks. I should note, however, that some 2024 model year trucks lose their dual onboard chargers. Electric tractor company Solectrac has been evicted from its Santa Rosa facility after owing more than $65,000 in back rent. The company's future looks bleak and some existing Solectrac dealers are now cutting all ties of the company. A new report from the U.S. Energy Information Administration states that improvements in solar generation in Texas means that solar is forecast to displace natural gas-generated electricity in the state during the day and during this upcoming summer. Tesla has upped its prefabricated supercharger deployment and now states it can deploy prefab superchargers in just four days. It's not the first company to use prefab charging deployments, but it's sure as heck faster than the months-long deployment schedule that Electrify America seems to have. BYD has confirmed its next-generation Blade EV battery pack is coming this year ahead of an original schedule. It's expected to offer upwards of 190 watt hours of storage per kilogram, dramatically changing the EV landscape. The CEO of Hyundai North America, Randy Parker, is calling rival automakers in the US out for their putting back of EV production plans. He asked why anyone would buy an EV from a car company that's still actively campaigning against EVs. There's been a will-it-won't-it story around Tesla's promised $25,000 EV, and while Elon Musk has denied recent reports that Tesla has cancelled it, analysts at Recurrent stated this week that it really doesn't matter if Tesla makes it or not, because prices are now low enough that other companies will happily step into the breach and make their own. And finally, for the short shorts, sales data from February shows that global plug-in car sales grew 3% in the month, with European plug-in car sales growing a healthy 10% year over year. It kind of blows the whole, nobody wants an EV fud right out of the water now, doesn't it? And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. Our final two stories are next, but first, a quick word from one of today's video sponsors, Atmos Financial. Imagine a bank where your savings not only grow, but also go towards growing a greener world. That is exactly what Atmos Financial does for you. With Atmos, every dollar in your checking and savings account is funding projects that light up lives with solar energy rather than fossil fuels. Atmos is banking that builds a better tomorrow with every swipe of your card, because it's committed to investing 100% in clean, equitable and sustainable progress. With a 3.5% savings rate and a mobile app, your finances and the climate can go hand in hand. It charges no monthly fees and there are no minimums keeping you awake at night, and it offers accessible solar loans for those who really want to give the fossil fuel industry the ultimate middle finger. By joining Atmos using the link below, you're not only choosing a smarter way to bank, you're planting seeds for a healthier earth. And since every sign-up supports this channel, allowing us to bring you the content you love, 
I think it's a great deal. I'm a customer and I love knowing that I'm helping save money and making sure that my money doesn't end up funding the fossil fuel industry. And now it's time for those last two stories. We often see naysayers in the comments section trying to portray EVs as playthings of the wealthy and no better for the planet than internal combustion engine vehicles. We've debunked that plenty, but this week a new study from Synapse Energy Economics shows categorically that EV drivers have generated $3 billion of net revenue for utilities in the 10 years between 2011 and 2021. At the same time, that custom is actually helping lower the cost of producing electricity, which could make the grid cheaper for everyone. Also this week, a new study from UC Berkeley shows that vehicle emission rates in San Francisco have dropped 2.6% annually between 2018 and 2022, driven by EV adoption. This results in fewer air particulates, links to respiratory illness and premature death. So go EVs! And finally, there's been a lot of news lately surrounding autonomous vehicle collisions and incidents, and I've always maintained that we should ask autonomous vehicles to pass the very same driving test that we humans must do to be allowed on the road. Looks like Hyundai agrees because earlier this week it published a video showcasing an autonomous Ionic 5 taking part in a simulated driving test in the state of Nevada. While this was, I want to reiterate, a simulated test that's basically a bit of a publicity stunt, the car became the first autonomous vehicle to ever take part in and pass a driving test. It passed with flying colours with veteran driving examiner Candice Jones putting it through its paces. Hyundai does note that for the campaign film, some segments were filmed with a human driver behind the wheel, presumably operating as a safety driver as required under state law for segments that weren't filmed on a private road. Either way, well done to Hyundai for the test result and for the clever marketing campaign. Tesla, Ford, et al, please take note. And on that note, we are in fact done for the day. As always, a massive thank you to the Electric Vehicle Association for sponsoring today's show. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967 and firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean green electric cars today. The EVA can help you find someone near to you that can help you make the switch to electric. It can help you become an EV educator and it can point you in the direction of monthly meetups for like-minded EV fans. Plus, if you become a member, you'll gain access to a clean energy and EV loan program set up between the EVA and the Colorado Clean Energy Credit Union. So find out more by heading to electricauto.org. And thanks to Energy Sage. Follow the link below to find out how easy it can be to get verified, trustworthy solar experts helping you make the step towards energy self-sufficiency through solar on the roof of your home, by joining a community solar project, or by getting a heat pump installed. And finally, thanks to Atmos Financial. Bank better by following the link below. As usual, we would all love it if you'd consider supporting us from just $1 a month on Patreon, which is about $10.08 a year. The overwhelming majority of our income does come from Patreon support, and it's thanks to you that I'm able to pay the team and make sure everyone has healthcare. But our Patreon figures have been dropping lately, so if you'd like to support the channel, follow the links below. You can book myself or Kate for a personal one-on-one -on -one consulting session, or in fact, a full-blown presentation to your community group or company. And don't forget to visit our swag store for our new design for April, which is all about growing your own EV charging in honour of spring in the Northern Hemisphere. I love that t-shirt and it, along with the rest of our TE merch, is there for your swag needs. And of course, we'll be back next week as usual with content going out every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And to finish, if you're a group currently feeling the full force of hate at the hands of legislators and justices who don't want you to exist, feel that laws written prior to your gaining the right to vote have precedent over your reproductive rights, or indeed are making false statements in government commissioned reports to try and deny your community the health care they deserve, know that you are not alone. You are valid, you are loved, you have a place in this world, and you have a voice. So importantly, make sure you use it to register to vote where you happen to live. Regardless of how you actually vote, taking part in the voting process gives you a voice and ensures democracy continues. So until next time, stay safe regardless of your identity or who you love, be an amazing ally, be kind, register to vote, get active in a campaign, and please, for the sake of everyone's future, keep evolving.